Hi, my name's Tom, and I have a brand new dishwasher. Uh, my old dishwasher just got carted away, and this one just got delivered. So now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hook this up. Uh, I've kind of gone through the manual, and there's a bunch of different little steps I have to do. I've taken out some of the packing material. I have to go ahead and pull the foam off the sides and take the stickers off and all those things. But I'm going to jump right into the actual mechanics of the dishwasher. There are three things that I have to do. I have to hook up the electricity to the dishwasher. I have to hook up the water supply line to the dishwasher. And I have to hook up the drainage line so the water can go out of the dishwasher. Um, this particular dishwasher actually has a drainage built right onto the side. It's actually built into it. It's hanging off there. Uh, so that's not too bad. I do already have all of my hookups. I have a, a supply line built off my hot water under my sink. And I have this drainage line actually going into a uh, outlet connected to the sink. So it's all already there. The actual stuff's there. I'm replacing an existing dishwasher with this one. So the one thing I have to do first is I have to be able to get to the electrical and to the water supply. And for this particular dishwasher, I've got a metal plate on the front and I need to take those screws off. And that's where I'm going to start. Okay. In this case, I have two screws. And through the magic of video editing, the plate comes off. Okay, so here's what I have. Uh, I have an electrical box right here. This is where my electrical cord will be attached to. It'll probably come in the back. I'll, to, I'll take this off. There's one little screw holding this front plate on. And then I have my supply line right here. Let's see if I can twist that up a little bit. Not really. Okay, so my supply line is here and it screws on. Uh, can you see it there? I'll slide the camera over. It's small and it's kind of tucked back there, but the supply line will run underneath the dishwasher right here and kind of go straight to the back. Uh, so that's kind of how this whole thing will, will work. Okay, I've now removed the screw and I can take this little electric plate off. And here is my electrical connections. For my dishwasher. I have a black, I have a white, and I have a ground. And by an amazing coincidence, on my cord kit, I also have a black, white, and a ground. And this is going to make it so I can just plug in my dishwasher. So the way this is going to work, let me move my screws out of the way. This particular cord kit has a, a little gray plastic, kind of a, a junction plug here. I should be able to run this right behind the box, push it, and it'll click through, and then I just go ahead and connect the three wires, green to green, white to white, and black to black. Okay, so I got this, the plug's actually in. Uh, I'm gonna connect the wires. What I did was I, I put a light, I set up a little light, and I put it up on blocks just so it's a little bit easier to see. And all you need to do is put the wires together. I wish I had a little more play with the old dishwasher wires here, but or with the cord wires, but I, I have what I have. Uh, so we go black to black. And the way I typically do it is I kind of put them together and I kind of twist them once or twice just to kind of get them to stay in place. And then I put a cap on it. And I hope I screwed it the right way there. I usually screw it to the right to tighten, so. Uh, but you could feel the wires kind of gripping together. And they should be nice and tight. That cap should not come off if you tug on it. And uh, the, the dishwasher instructions actually recommend using electrical tape in addition to any sort of caps. So I'm gonna put some electrical tape on. So that's all good. Uh, I have to kind of squeeze the wires up so they don't get pinched, so they don't get kinked here. There we go. And where's my electrical plate? There's my front plate. And it looks like it goes like this. Kind of clips in there. And then we screw the whole thing back in. Make sure that plate is tight.
cord comes at the back, it's secure. Our screw is now secure. And our cord is actually, this, this dishwasher actually has a little channel straight down to the back. So the cord goes straight down to the back and then out the back and we're done with the cord. So here I am again. I've now moved my dishwasher across my kitchen into approximately where it's actually gonna go. Um, when you're pushing a dishwasher or lifting it, you have to be careful. Mine is stainless steel, nice pretty front, but you don't wanna push or knee or accidentally lean against this because you can uh, both scratch it and or dent it. And then you've just ruined your brand new nice dishwasher. So when you move a dishwasher, you always wanna kind of push it from behind or push it sideways, but you really wanna keep your hands off of this front stainless steel. Uh, and of course, stainless steel, a lot of stainless steels will actually leave fingerprints with so the clean those off so off, ever so often. So you just wanna be really, really careful about treating this nicely. Uh, so now that I'm kind of in position, I have, th again, three things I wanna hook up. One is my power cord, uh, and that will actually go into that uh, top hole right there. I already have my electric, but the power cord will go right into there, and that'll get plugged into the outlet that I installed uh, a couple days ago. Uh, I also have a supply line and a drainage line, and they will go into holes on this side of the cabinet. There's one up top and one over there, and then there's another supply line down the bottom. And those will go into then underneath my, my dark sink. Uh, so I'll try to show you that. It's a little bit messy and it's a little bit um, dark, so it's kind of hard to show you. But basically, you're gonna, this is going to be a little bit of a logistics trick because the cords or the lines are only so long. So my supply line will probably only allow me to bring to right to here, but I got to hook it up over here. So what I'm going to probably do is I'm probably going to hook it into the dishwasher first, push the dishwasher back, and then snake it into my uh, sink line. It's just kind of, you just have to kind of play around with this to make sure you have enough room and, and play to move back and forth with the dishwasher. But you essentially want to hook up all three lines, electrical drainage and water supply, before you screw this into any kind of cabinet or before you do anything permanent with it. Uh, same thing with leveling. You want to have the whole, whole system in there and it's close to in where it's supposed to be before you start to level with the feet and play with the up and down and back and forth and all those things. So that's my next, my next uh, step is to connect the supply line and the drainage lines. All right, here we are again on the floor. Uh, my supply line coming from the back of my dishwasher up to the front through this little channel. That's really nice. And now all I have to do is take this supply line and screw it onto this little gold part of the uh, dishwasher. Now these supply lines are uh, standard. You go to the big box store and you say, hey, give me a dishwasher supply line. They'll take you right to it. So here's what I'm going to do. It just kind of, it's a little coupling. It just clicks on there. And then you can hand tighten it for as much as you can. There, okay. And there we go. It's tricky to get on. Okay, so now that it's there, I need to tighten it. And again, my problem is, because I'm on the floor, I'm knocking lights over, because I'm on the floor, I don't have a lot of play. Now I'm going to pull my supply lines. Uh, I'll have to move some stuff out of the way. There we go. I'm going to pull and make sure they're straight, no kinks, no loops. So here you can see where the supply line, uh, that's the silver line, and then the gray line is the drainage line. They come in through the cabinet. The supply line connects right into the uh, hot water under my sink, and it's just screwed in. Uh, I have not turned it on yet, there's a valve there. But then the drainage line clicks into the, or kind of connects into the drainage portion of my sink. Uh, I had to extend it a little bit because I was about ooh, about five six inches too short on the drainage line. So uh, I got a hose and then I connected with a little coupling and I put it all together with uh, tension brackets or uh, springs. Uh, you can do this 
pretty regularly. You don't want to go too far with a drainage line because the pumps aren't designed for that. But a couple inches here and there is fine. Uh, there's all kind of packing material to remove from my dishwasher. Make sure you get it all because some of it might actually prevent it from running the first time out. And before I go too far with this, uh, pushing the, the dishwasher all the way in, I have to install little brackets. Now, sometimes the brackets are already installed and they just kind of stick out and they allow you to screw your dishwasher into your wood top cabinets. Uh, so in this case, I have kind of crappy laminate cabinets, so that's what I'm going to do. So you take this little bracket, in this particular case, you kind of stick it in here where it says bracket, and it'll sit there like that, and then you use needle nose pliers, and you bend this tab down just to kind of hold it in place. And then you do the same thing uh, with the other side. So uh, let's see here. So I just kind of stick the tab in, roll it around, there we go, and then I'll bend this down with some needle nose pliers, and we'll be good to go. And here is the bracket after I bent it down. Uh, it's fairly secure. It's, it's not going to fall off. But I'm going to then, once I get the dishwasher all the way in, I will run a screw up through here into my cabinet top. And it will attach the dishwasher to the cabinet and just keep it more stable. Now comes the tedious part of leveling your dishwasher and kind of raising it up. Mine's actually pretty low, so I need to raise it up a lot. Uh, the way this one particularly works is that you can either use a wrench at the top of this, this front screw, or you can kind of put a screwdriver in and kind of just twist it around like that. It kind of slides a little bit. It's kind of clever. I'm going to do about two turns on one side and do two turns on the other because I don't want to, I don't want to get it too out of, out of line. And then I'll raise the other side up a little bit. When we're checking the feet and raising the dishwasher, we should really just check and see how level it really is. Now, how do you check a dishwasher to see level? Uh, a couple ways. You can take out the, the bottom rack and use a level. You know, you just kind of put it on the, on the ground and just kind of test it. Now, mine's a little bit off. It's close. Mine's a little bit off right now. But my dish, my actual kitchen is actually a tiny bit slanted, just the way the floors are have settled over the years. So another way to kind of check for level is to make sure that the gap at the top, the countertop, is pretty even all the way across. Uh, if it's not, it'll be noticeable and it'll look like an amateur job. It won't look secure. It might be secure, but it won't look secure. So that's another way to kind of test it. You want to have a little bit of a gap because you don't want your door to actually be scraping your countertop. So that's pretty good. Uh, but I can still see I have a, still have a problem because when I look into my dishwasher, I'm actually looking down into my dishwasher because the front of the dishwasher is now much higher than the back of the dishwasher. So I'm going to kind of use my level, put it back in here and kind of see that. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the screws in the front of the dishwasher to adjust the back. And that's kind of a nice feature. Most newer dishwashers now have a, an adjustment in the front where you can control the back of it so you don't have to pull it out, readjust the feet, push it back in, and kind of test it again. So I'm going to show you how to do that next. Okay, so here in the front of my dishwasher, again, right in the bottom, I have my two side feet. On either side, I have my water supply line. But right in the middle, I have a little screw. And mine says tub up and tub down. So let's see, I want to go tub up because the tub in the back, so I'll kind of push it in. And I'll turn it, and I can, it's subtle, but I can see and feel things kind of adjusting. If you ever open your dishwasher and find a pool of water in it, or one side or the other, or just a, a place where water collects, there's a good chance your dishwasher is no longer level. Uh, they're designed so that when they are level, everything should drain out right through the center. So that's another way of testing your dishwasher as well, is to pour some water in, let it sit in the bottom, see if it drains out. Uh, if it doesn't, chances are you're not quite level enough yet. Uh, my dishwasher is pretty level now, and it's in about as far as, as it can go. I have the supply line hooked up, I have the drainage line hooked up, I have the plug ready to plug in. So now my last real step here before I kind of test it and start checking the water and making sure I don't have any leaks, which I might, is to screw in the two brackets into the countertop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to the uh, 
came with it came with screws. I'm going to check little screws. I'm going to pre-drill tiny little holes just so I don't destroy my countertops. And then I'm going to go ahead and put those screws in and tighten it up, and that will secure this dishwasher to the countertop. And then I should be ready for testing. And here is my outlet that I installed just for my dishwasher. And here is the plug. And uh, I'll go ahead and plug that in. And here we are testing it per the manufacturer. We put in a, a turbo cycle, uh, nothing in it. Water's running, we're checking for leaks. There's no leaks from the water supply line down the bottom. No leaks from the water su supply line underneath the sink. Uh, so far it's done a little bit of drainage. I can feel the, the drain pipe shaking. Water's going through it, but there hasn't been any leaks there. So uh, we're going to let the whole thing run for its uh, run time. I think it's going to be about two hours with drying. And then we'll just double check everything. And if it works, hey great, we're there. Uh, if not, we'll tighten up all our connections and then we'll go ahead and give it another shot. But so far so good. Uh, looking good. We saved ourselves, saved ourselves about 150 bucks by doing this. That's what a typical plumber will charge for this. Uh, and then they'll also charge for parts on top of it. I needed to buy about 30 or 40 dollars worth of parts, a supply line, uh, a new, actually the drainage line was actually included. I had to buy an extension, but I also bought a power cord for about 10 bucks. So 10 bucks plus the supply line is about 30 or 40 bucks all told. Uh, it really wasn't that bad of a job. It took me about an hour, hour and a half. And uh, soon we're gonna have some pretty clean dishes once the testing's done.